Hi, and welcome back to Astrophysics Research Basics. Today's topic is photometry. So photometry is basically measuring the amount of light you get from an object. And for us astrophysicists, we will be using a telescope and a camera. So usually the camera that you'll be using is called a CCD, which stands for Charge Coupled Device. And I'll go ahead and explain how a CCD works. So the CCD works by uh, basically you tell the camera, because it's a camera, you tell the camera to open its shutter for a certain amount of time, and we call that time an exposure time. And while the shutter is open, photons will hit the pixels on the device and will convert into electrons through the photoelectric effect. Those pixels will hold those electrons for that exposure time, that length of time that you set, and at the end of that, it will read out the amount of electrons and will label that as counts. So at the end of the day, you'll get like a frame for where you know each pixel is each pixel in the frame of counts. However, these counts aren't necessarily perfectly representative of the situation, so we need to do data reduction. So data reduction is the process of taking that raw frame of counts that you receive and editing it in a sense to remove possible defects and other like physical phenomena that will alter what actually the object kind of looks like. Data reduction is really necessary because you know the world ain't perfect. So let's talk about the different frames that you'll need for data reduction. There are generally three different frames that you will hear about. The first is called the bias frame. So the bias frame basically will correct for general like noise that is involved with the readout of the CCD. So in general, everything in the world has some sort of noise. You know, you can think of like the camera as the workings of it aren't like 100% efficient nor 100% perfect. So there's going to be some amount of like general noise involved with everything. That is what the bias is going to cover. The second frame is called a dark. So the dark measures noise from basically heat, thermal noise. You can think of it as like, not every area on the detector is going to be the same. So it'll calibrate the pixels so that they all read the same value before exposure. So a dark is really important because of that. And then the third one is the flat. So a flat is like a correction factor for each pixel so that they, they all give the same value when exposed to the same quantity of light for a given optical path. So you can think of it like between you and the object, there's a lot of stuff in the air. For example, if you're um, on a ground-based telescope, there's a lot of stuff in the air or, the or on the detector or anything between you and whatever object in space that you're viewing that's going to mess with this path that the light takes. And so you need to be able to correct for that. And so you take what's called a flat. Additionally, you might also want to take frames of a reference star. So what is a reference star? Well, let's think about this for a second. Since the data that we receive in that data frame is in counts, counts, we don't really have a sense of the actual flux of whatever we're observing. Flux is basically the measurement of brightness. So if we actually want to know the actual brightness that we're measuring of the object, then we need to compare it to something whose brightness that we already know. And that is called a standard star. So basically, there is a large collection of standard stars that have measured brightnesses uh, and we use those brightnesses to figure out the flux of our object. Uh, how can we do that? I will go more into that into the next episode, which will cover more in depth into the analysis of photometry. For now, let's move on to how to take bias, dark, and flat frames. So basically, for bias frames, you'll want to close the shutter and make sure it's completely dark wherever you are. So make sure even though the shutter is closed that there's no lights going on in the room where the telescope is because light can sometimes seep into um, underneath the shutter or something like that. So you want to make sure it's completely dark. Then you'll want to set the CCD exposure time to zero. Or if you can't get zero, then as, as short as you can get it. Yes. And then you'll want to take a bunch. Since it's a zero exposure time, you can take however many 
is possible I guess. Uh, some people like to do 50 or 100, like uh, the more the better because this is essentially getting rid of noise and basically the more images you have, the more I guess like better it will be at getting rid of that noise. Uh, you'll take a bunch of them and then you'll stack them to make it master bias. So what is stacking? Stacking is basically taking all those images, aligning them, and then averaging them. Yeah, so make it master bias. Okay, how do you take darks? Basically with a dark, you'll want to close the shutter and also make sure it's dark, so exactly the same situation as with the biases, but you'll want to make sure the exposure time is the same as for your data frames. Basically you'll do that, and then you'll take a bunch, just like with the biases, but you know, since it's not zero exposure time, depending on the exposure time of your data, it may be easier or harder to take a lot of darks. Like for example, if you're viewing something really, really dim, then you might have like 20 minute exposure times. And it would not be fun to take 120 minute exposure times for your, for your darks. So do something reasonable. Okay, and then how do you take flats? So flats, basically you want to have in your field of view, a basically uniform piece of light. So there are several ways you can get this. Observational astronomers have sometimes put up special panels inside of the observatory that you can point the telescope to. It's like sometimes like mounted on the dome. That is a flat piece of plastic or something that will be kind of like a uniform piece of light that you can point at. So sometimes you can use that. If the dome panel isn't available, you will need to use the sky. And so there are two, two different types of flats that people c tend to use when they point at the sky. The first is called a twilight flat. So the twilight sky is generally somewhat uniform. That's kind of debatable, but you know, some people say it's uniform enough. So you point at the twilight sky and take your flat. Sometimes you can't use a twilight sky, and so some people will just point at the dark sky in a very like, empty part of the sky. Just get like a dark sky kind of image. How long do you want to expose for? So for flats, you want to get as high an amount of counts as you can get. A large amount of counts. And I think like when I was taking flats by myself, I aimed for around 20,000 counts. So you want something around that number. So you'll select an exposure time that will get you around 20,000, at least 20,000 counts or higher without, um, I guess, overexposing. Uh, so as, as high as you can get. So you select an exposure time for that that's like good for whatever different type of flat you're using. So for example, with brighter situations, like for example, the dome flat, that'll generally be a bright object you're looking at that'll take less exposure time to get the same amount of counts versus if you were looking at the dark night sky with little stars, then that is not not very bright at all, so you'll have to expose for much longer. Okay, so now you have your flat, and what you'll want to do is you'll want to subtract the master bias from that flat, and then you'll get the master flat. So I think I should put in a caveat here. So darks actually contain some of the bias information. So if your exposure times are really short and you can take a lot of darks, because remember the dark exposure time matches your data exposure time. So if you can take a lot of darks, then you can get away with sometimes just using darks and not necessarily also biases. However, CCDs are getting better and better at kind of reducing the dark current. So if you use like a really modern CCD, chances are you don't really need to use darks and can just use biases, which is good for us, right? Because biases just take zero exposure time. They're basically like no time. You can just take however many you, you need. So, you know, if you use a really modern instrument, chances are it might allow you to just use biases. So keep that in mind. And yeah, otherwise, I will go ahead and explain the process of using all three of these data reduction frames. All right, so hopefully you have all of your data reduction pieces. You have also your data frames and hopefully some standard star frames. Those are all of the pieces you need. Okay, so the last thing we'll cover is how to actually use these data reduction frames to reduce your data. Okay, you'll want to subtract both the master dark and the master bias and then divide by the master flat. 
Hooray! Now you have data that you can actually use that got rid of all these, you know, dumb things that the atmosphere does or your detector does to your data, right? If you have any questions on this process of taking photometry data, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, stay tuned for episode three, which, which will go more in depth into how you can analyze your photometry data and things like that. See you next time. Bye-bye.